Goal Trader Training, Measuring Trading Performance, Video 2, Macro Measurement. In this video, we're going to look at general principles of measuring trading from a macro point of view and give you some guidance about how to get the key numbers that are going to determine your overall trading performance. Before we start, of course, we're just going to review the three foundations of measurement that you need to learn, develop and action that are macro measurement, which you're talking about in this video, which is all about your overall results and the key numbers that go alongside that. And then the two micro measurements that make up that macro number, which is behavioral performance and system performance. So this is the model we're using through which you can develop your trading potential. On top of these key numbers around your system, perhaps in your long-term trading measurement approaches, we can have measurements in place that look at how we're learning, the quality of our decisions and direct mindset assessments, such as your confidence and self-efficacy as a trader. Uh, but that's another story for another series. So we're going to start by looking at some overall considerations in measuring what we're doing. There is a need for a critical mass of trades over a period of time. That means your numbers are meaningful in terms of what they're telling you and how reliable your trading is. What this means is you can't do it as a one-off doing it as a one-off is simply a benchmark through which subsequently you can develop an understanding of progress. So you need to look at things like account balance at set times, for example, monthly, quarterly or annually. But also, as well as that overall number, is to look at result trends. So are they getting better? Are they not getting better? This enables you to ride out those times when results may be not optimum. Some market conditions are harder to create reliable results in, or good results in consistently and reduce the likelihood of confidence issues from something called recency bias, where we only take notice of the results in the recent past. So if you have a three or four week period where things have been quite difficult in markets and haven't got the results that you expect, whereas over the previous six months you'd nailed it month after month, then it's unreasonable to make a judgment of you as a trader or your system based on those three or four weeks. It doesn't mean you ignore it, it just means you need to do a little more digging in terms of how you can make it better next time. Also, when you do these regular look at your overall numbers, it may be an indication as to whether you have some degree of reliability and can look at potentially scaling up your trading. So let's look at macro measurement in a little more detail. We're going to start with something we call your results barometer. Now, remember, measurement is of two types. A benchmark measurement, which is where you are now, and then a progression comparison, where you compare that benchmark versus how you're developing over a succession or a series of result measurements. After account balance, which is the ultimate barometer, it's a combination of key numbers which create this overall result. And these key numbers are win versus loss ratio and average win versus average loss, which we're going to discuss in a little more detail in a moment. Now, how these numbers look will depend on not only your adherence behaviorally to a system and the robustness of that system, but also on your particular trading style. So, for example, if you're perhaps an aggressive trader, you may find your win-loss ratio is very good, but your average win versus average loss is possibly comparable. So, for example, you may have seven wins for three losses or 70% win rate. Uh, and an average win versus average loss of $500 average win, $500 average loss, in which case, obviously, you're going to profit. So it's looking at the combination of how these numbers are put together, which is important, not just looking at the numbers themselves. Now, to get this is easy. You can just report on MT4 or MT5, depending on the platform you use. Go into history, right click to bring up the menu and choose the report. And you can alter the time of that report, obviously. It is only once we have this overview information, we can then start to dig a little deeper into what could be creating these results and, of course, subsequently how we can make them better. And this is what your report will look like. So these are the key numbers that we're interested in. So our profitable trades, our loss trades, what our average win was, what our average loss was. And in this case, you can see here's an example of our average profit is much less than our average loss, but yet we've still done pretty well because of the type of trading system that we've employed here. So two key things you need to do with this. First of all, of course, you need to take a baseline 
from where you are now. Perhaps look at the last six months and how this equity line works. And of course, these key numbers that we've talked about here. If you haven't done this already, make this your next task. So let's look at what creates these numbers. So for average win versus average loss, which is usually expressed in dollar terms, often these are associated with having effective exits. Obviously, high probability entries may contribute, but it includes not only your initial stop, but also your trail stops, profit targets, and what we term event stops, which are the topic of another video. Obviously, alongside this, we need to position size appropriately and have some discipline in execution. When we look at a win-loss ratio, this is usually expressed as a ratio such as 7 to 3 or a win percentage. And this is often thought to be about having effective entries. Now, just a warning on this, although entry receives a lot of airplay, its only purpose is to increase the likelihood of a trade going in your desired direction. Hence, effective exits also play a significant part in your win-loss ratio. Not only can you get these numbers overall, but also you can look at them in relation to specific asset choice, strategies and timeframes that you choose once you've got a critical mass of trades. And of course, as before, then your discipline in execution is critical to be able to make a judgment on what aspects of your system are creating these. So this is your next port of call in terms of a task is to start to consider what is actually creating these numbers.